Hey guys, welcome welcome back to my channel. My name is Mike. You guys are rocking with me on Mike's Intellectual Corner. On today's episode, we are diving back into our Kurtz videos. This is why we should not look for aliens in the dark forest. And without further ado, we're just going to dive right into it. Let's go. The universe is incredibly big and seems full of potential for life, with billions of habitable planets. If an advanced civilization had the technology to travel between the stars, at just 0.1% of the speed of light, it could colonize our galaxy in roughly 100 million years. Which is not that long given the billions of years the Milky Way has existed. So in principle, any spacefaring civilization should be able to spread rapidly over huge sectors of the galaxy. And yet we see... Yeah, but I think just... I think I, I feel like the universe is, you know, the, the fact that it's so huge, you know, we're not going to be able to see any type of alien civilization because just like ourselves, they're going to be microscopic on the huge back black backdrop of space. You know what I'm saying? They're not, I feel like they're not going to just be, you know, these huge mega structures and stuff like that. They might just be just like us, you know, being able to just take out that one little planet and, you know, make it their own pretty much. That's it over huge sectors of the galaxy and yet we see nothing hear nothing the universe seems empty devoid of others this is the Fermi paradox which we've discussed in more detail in other videos yeah and I'll get into those videos too as well because I'm pretty familiar with the Fermi paradox and stuff like that and the great filters and stuff like that but I do want to get into those videos so we will be uh, seeing those confronted with the seemingly empty universe Humanity faces a dilemma. We desperately want to know if we are alone in the Milky Way. We want to call out and reveal ourselves to anyone watching, but that could be the last thing we ever do. Because maybe the universe is not empty. Maybe it's full of civilizations, but they are hiding from each other. Maybe the civilizations that attracted attention in the past were wiped away by invisible arrows. This is the dark forest solution to the Fermi Paradox. Yeah, in my opinion, I feel like this theory really has to base heavily on the fact that any alien that we find would most likely be just like how we are if we find them. Which is kind of a long shot if you think about it. Like, we don't know. You know what I'm saying? You just never know. The way of life. The hunter awakes in his hiding place and carefully listens for suspicious noises from the thick undergrowth before he gets up. Another night has passed without incident. The forest is dark and full of fog. He considers calling out to others to end his loneliness, but stops himself at the last moment. What if they are like him? Almost well, sounds like an episode of uh, The Walking Dead a little bit, but I mean, if you guys think about it, you can't be scared in the search of, for life, you know what I'm saying? It's, it, it, that would almost be like if, you know, anybody who ever exp tried to explore the world was afraid, you know what I'm saying? Then we would still be in this little pocket of the Mediterranean, this little pocket of, the, of Africa, wherever, you know what I'm saying? And you would never know about the rest of the world and the rest of the people in the world, you know? All living things seek to survive, secure resources, and multiply. Their greatest obstacle are other living things that share the same objective. Competition between species favored the survival of beings with advantageous traits. Our ancestors were inventive, competitive, expansionist, and greedy for resources, which led them to winning the competition for our planet. Today, most other animals are so utterly at our mercy that we wipe out about a dozen species a day, just as an unintentional byproduct of how we like to run things. But it's kind of funny though, too, because if you think about it, the only way the only way that we are able to do this these type of things, or is the fact that we're able to work together as a group. Because if you think about it, a person by himself or herself can't really accomplish that much compared to with the group, with the civilization, with the society, and stuff like that. So. But humans are more than individuals. From us, cultures emerge that also compete with each other. Competitive and expansionary cultures spread faster and further and merge with, subdue or destroy others. If we look at our history, it becomes clear we are dangerous. 
not just to others, but also to ourselves. Our human nature has driven us to take over every corner of our planet, and soon we will look to the stars, both to expand our domain and ensure access to ever more resources. And then we might stumble upon others trying to do the same thing. But then again, you gotta also you gotta think about it. What if, unlike us, those other aliens are like, you know, how other animals on our planet are in the fact that they don't want to go and venture out to other places. Maybe they just want to set up their solar system the way that they want to set it up to where it's comfortable and and defensive-like and, and, you know, all that stuff. And they're comfortable just, just like that. You know what I'm saying? And again, how would we be able to see something that small like a solar system in the giant, enormous black job? backdrop of space you know what i'm saying so the same thing it's likely that the competition of life also takes place on faraway planets so it's logical to assume that an alien civilization that came to dominate their planet would be in some regards similar to us but if they're similar to us they too may be dangerous the implication as the hunter sneaks through the dark forest all alone, he knows that there might be others like him. He can't know their intentions, if they are aggressive or not. The hunter knows he would kill to ensure his own survival, so he has to assume that they would too. Yes, but at the same time, you also have to think, there's plenty of natural habitats that have millions upon billions of uh, different creatures coexisting co with not a single problem. You know what I'm saying? So why is it that we uh, two, two alien civilizations can't do the same thing? And do, they, you know what I'm saying? Kind of, it almost doesn't make sense because it's natural. They're in, na in nature, so why not? You know what I'm saying? I mean, we have the Amazon, we have the Congo, huge ecosystems that have multiple biodiversity and all that stuff. So it's like, I feel like why not, you know? And it might be that if he stumbles upon another hunter, the one that shoots first survives. None of this means that conflict is unavoidable. So far, the progress of the modern world seems to have made us more peaceful, not more violent. Maybe this is true for other civilizations too, that eventually progress means less conflict, not more. Different alien civilizations also should vary from the mild and peaceful to the malevolent and militaristic. The existential problem we're facing is that when we meet others between the stars, we have no way of telling who is peaceful or aggressive and what their true intentions are. Similarly, they might not understand or trust our intentions. In my opinion too though, I feel like it's probably leaning more towards their non-militaristic if they're a space age civilization just for the fact that it takes so long, you know, for a civilization to get to that, that step to that age and the hindrance of war and stuff like that is just such a hindrance. It, you just can't get to it. Not to mention it's, it's almost like a caveman type of way of thinking, you know, let's, uh, like, why are we focused on this little this little speck when we have this entire universe to worry about you know what i'm saying like let's work together and colonize it together you know what i'm saying so let's see they might not understand or trust our intentions even if we tell them that we are peaceful on top of that if we did discover another civilization and they discovered us the light years between us would mean years of communication delay both sides would be in a state of uncertainty, wondering if the wisest move is to just attack because there's another serious issue, technological explosions and the first strike advantage. We don't know where the limits of technology are, but we do know how much technological progress matters in war. A few hundred or thousand years can turn conflict with uncertain results into a one-sided massacre. But plus you also have to remember though too, um just for the fact that I was trying to find another intelligent life form out there in the world or out there in the universe is like, you got to think of how rare that really truly is. Because even here on planet Earth, think about all the trillions of trillions of creatures that have ever lived, not just that are alive today, but that have ever lived since the dawn of time. We are the only species that we know of, at least, that 
has manipulated and been so smart to have been able to manipulate and do what you know what i'm saying create hard stuff like this and create a, a a a false world around us that we're comfortable have digital um stuff all around us you know what i'm saying we're the only creatures that have been able to accomplish that so it kind of stems to think like is that kind of a rare thing in in the in nature then because you know what I'm saying? So how rare is it in, in out there in the universe? So that's all I'm saying. So let's see. I did massacre. Caesar's legions would stand no chance against Napoleon's army with their cannons and muskets, which would be eradicated by artillery from the First World War, which would not stand a chance against today's drones and guided missiles. So the power level of different civilizations may vary massively, and even if not, between the time it takes us to detect another civilization and us saying hi, we might already be hopelessly behind on the tech tree. Which is bad enough, but the nature of interstellar conflict makes this worse. If your opponent is light years away, sending an invasion fleet takes so long that by the time it arrives, it might be hopelessly obsolete. Yeah, and plus by that time too, you gotta think, if, the, if we're sending generational ships, what's the point? Do you really think that our freaking, uh, you know, our great, 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 10 times great uh, grandkids are really going to care what we had going on, you know what I'm saying? And, and I'm sure that they'd be so advanced in their thinking that they'd be like, you know what, we're going to go ahead and work with these aliens so that way we can both, as a civilization, go forward, you know what I'm saying? Uh, that's just my thought process, but yeah, I could... It might be hopelessly obsolete. So war between civilizations might be just about eliminating the other to remove an existential threat to yourself. Someone else who might be so scared of you that they attack the first chance they get. In this environment, the only way to guarantee a win is to strike with such force and speed that the target has no chance of survival or time to counterattack or escape to seek revenge later. The stakes are the highest possible with no room for error. This kind of also kind of it feels like this is only happening if people are thinking like they did in the 1800s and, and back then where everything is so war heavy and so, um, you know, thinking about only kind of that that uh, selfish thinking of only thinking about your country and yourself and stuff like that and kind of saying, fuck everybody else and all that and you don't care who dies and all this and, you know what I'm saying? You know how they were thinking back then, so it just kind of stinks feels like we're past that as a civilization, obviously, and we're only going for further forward as we go, you know, as time goes past. But Highest possible with no room for error. If we assume that the majority of civilizations live on planets, that leaves them pretty vulnerable. All you need to do is throw something massive at a planet to make it uninhabitable. So the ultimate interplanetary annihilation weapon is probably something like a relativistic kill vehicle. A missile shot at a planet at a significant fraction of the speed of light. For example, a missile the size of a person going 95% the speed of light has as much energy as all <coughs> nuclear bombs on Earth. Yeah, in my opinion too, I feel like whenever we do get to that age when we're able to search for these different planets and stuff like that, it'll almost be like, it'll almost be like whenever the Polynesians were out there in the, in the vast Pacific and they were able to find these little specks of uh, islands out there and you know, what was a long shot of, you know, if they miss by like two miles, they're not going to hit another land until they hit freaking South Korea, South America or something. You know what I'm saying? It's just something that crazy. I feel like it's going to be the same exact thing whenever we search for a different uh, planets and home and life and stuff out there. But... If you shot a few dozen at the civilization you wanted to wipe out, success would be fairly certain. Even a single hit would suffice. This is not that absurd of an idea. A civilization only slightly above us on the Kardashev scale would have enough energy to send multiple strikes against every planet it suspects of harboring life. What makes these weapons so sinister is how much they favor a first strike, since they would be so fast that it might be impossible to protect yourself effectively against them once they're launched. Conflict between civilizations may not be lengthy affairs, but rapid winner-takes-all situations, where the first one to shoot wins. This makes any civilization an existential threat to any other. 
And if every civilization is an existential threat to every other, there may be only two kinds of civilizations out there. Quiet ones and dead ones. So what should we do? Should we worry? It's unlikely that anybody has noticed humanity yet. The radio signals we've transmitted in the last 100 years traveled a relatively tiny distance and... Which is pretty good when you think about it because the first radio waves, if I'm not mistaken, were from the 1936 Berlin Olympics, which if you don't know, they're the Nazi Olympics, so probably not the best uh, showcase for us, but yeah, just saying. ...distance and have long decayed into unreadable noise. At our technological stage, if we don't actively try to get noticed, and if nobody specifically looks at our pretty unremarkable solar system, we'll stay hidden. But one day we will venture into space in a serious way and need to consider these kinds of questions again. We don't know if... Personally, I get excited for it because, I mean, think about it. Think about all the technological freaking advancements that will probably most likely come from it on top of the fact that you kind of have you kind of get to think to yourself and look at this other being and think to yourself dang you know you were created and, and reformed and you know what i'm saying a whole different part of the you know universe it's just so crazy it's just you know the fantasy of it you know what i'm saying it's just it's crazy thing about the yeah. don't know if there are others or if we are going through the forest alone but we have no way of knowing for sure for the time being it seems the best we can do is to carefully listen and even if we see others step into a clearing and make themselves known, we should not reply right away, but carefully watch them from the undergrowth. Perhaps we are also thinking about this all wrong by allowing our primitive brain that evolved in the context of the gruesome competition of life to conjure fears of predatory aliens all around us. Maybe the fact that we are looking at the universe like this is a sign that we are not grown up yet as a species. There could be a friendly, welcoming community of alien civilizations waiting to hear from us when... I mean, plus, personally, I say nothing great has ever come, you know, with our little bit of, you know, some chance, you know what I'm saying? And, like, everything that's ever been great, that's ever been done, is, like, done off of taking a chance. It's never been, you know, a safety thing, in my opinion. ...community of alien civilizations waiting to hear from us when we are ready. As for now, the good news is there is actually little we need to do. We just need to be thoughtful about the signals we send out into the galaxy. We need to watch the sky and learn more about our galaxy, our forest. Because whatever the nature of our forest is, full of dangers or friends or nobody at all, only careful observation can tell. So, let's do that. Plus, I mean, in any case, too, you got to think, this stuff ain't gonna happen for like another maybe 300 years and that's like at the minimal uh, like period is when we'll start doing stuff like this in outer space but it, that's like like i said that's like minimal time we're talking about so at, at last the hunter reaches a clearing and finds a comfortable position slowly the sun melts the fog away lost in thought he admires the vegetation until suddenly he is eye to eye with another hunter frozen in terror just like himself his mind is racing considering all the different options the hunter takes a deep breath yeah because i feel like a lot of this is just stemming from like a fear of change and if you think about it, that's like a really primitive way of thinking because that's how people back then were thinking that's why people were afraid of you know here in america where people were afraid of black people that's why freaking uh you know world war ii happened that's why freaking all this crazy stuff happened it's like people just were afraid of change or something like that or people were afraid of something that was different from them and that's such a primitive way of thinking you know what i'm saying so and makes a decision maybe the only way out of the dark forest is to step into the clearing together and with this all right good we'll go ahead and end it right there but yeah uh definitely another great uh Kurtz video i think this is probably the last one of the year but thank you guys again for joining me for another uh great video if you guys like it don't forget to like comment and subscribe i'll see you guys when i see you. i'm out Peace.